Infrastructure Committee February 3rd to order. I want to welcome everybody for being here today. Um, we have a we have a quorum present, so only member not here is Al Christensen. He said he might be a little bit late. Uh, we're going to move on to public comment. I didn't receive anybody uh, approaching me before the meeting. Do we have anybody online or present in the room that wishes to make public comment? Last call for public comment. Anybody online? Hearing none, we'll move on to item three on the agenda. Approval of the minutes of the January 6th, 2022 Infrastructure Committee meeting. We got a motion from Robinson, second from Seiler. Any comments, questions on the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed, say nay. Minutes for January 6, 2022, Infrastructure Committee meeting are approved. On to item four, policy issues discussion, potential committee determination. 4A, bipartisan infrastructure bill, or infrastructure law. You want to, is um, that? Ari will take okay. that. Um, yeah, so the bi, uh, Bipartisan Infrastructure Law or Infrastructure Investments and Jobs Act has been passed. Um, the state still needs to final their allocation to that, but what we're looking at is $1.1 billion over the next five years of additional money, uh, plus on top of that another $45 million going toward bridges per year. $200 million needs to be allocated before September of this year uh, for the 23 construction. So those projects that they're looking at for 2023 will um, this be for construction only? There'll be no design with those. They're looking for simple projects. Uh, they're looking for straightforward projects, projects that don't have any utility issues, no right away, no wetland issues. Uh, so that's what they're looking for for the following year. And then after that, um, for the next round of projects, those are all due April 1st. And after that, June 1st, you can submit for design and construction. And I'll go through some projects that we're going to have for both submittals here in a little bit. 15% uh, of that money is being set aside for local roads, minor collectors. Now, previously in the STP program, minor collectors and local town roads are never eligible for the STP program. They always have the TRIP program out there for the towns, but not the STP program. One of the major differences in the STP program is you need a full set of plans, specifications, and estimates for those projects. So you need to make sure that you have a project worthy. You know, you don't want to, uh, for the townships, you don't want to start spending, or the county, you don't want to start spending a ton of money on engineering if you have a half a mile project. You want to make something that's worthwhile uh, that you're spending this extra dollars in. So again, 15% of that money is set aside for local roads um, or about $30 million. Um, again, all projects need to go through the ps &E process, which means you need the projects need to have plans, specifications, estimates, and will be state-let, uh, state meaning the counties cannot do any of that work. We don't have the capacity to do that work in-house, so any of that work that we would be looking at running through this program uh, we can do the applications, but we're going to be looking at somebody for all the design work of that. Um, road projects are at an 80% federal and a 20% local match. Uh, bridges, uh, this is new for this cycle, something different, is bridges can be anywhere from 80 to 100%. Uh, they, we had a meeting with them this past Wednesday. It'll be determined at the time of the project of where your funding is set at. So. At this point, we don't know if it, we're going to get 80% funding or 100% funding on bridges. As I mentioned earlier, the first round of applications are due April 1st. It can be for construction only. Projects that we anticipate to put into the first round of funding uh, that this committee already had us go ahead and uh, get some design work and some shovel-ready projects are, is County Highway T from the South County line to State Trunk Highway 97. County Trunk Highway J from 153 to 29. Highway X from 153 to Wood Road. We're also looking at possibly putting County Trunk Highway H from N to 29 in that. 
Uh, we're just working some with some uh, local issues with that one. So we're, we're not 100% sure that we can get the, uh, again, the plan specifications and estimate PSE ready by their June 1st deadline for that first round of submittals. The first round of submittals, I said that we're due April 1st. You have to have the plans, specifications, and estimate, the PSE package, all ready by June 1st. So we're working with that firm to see if they can get this done. Otherwise, we'd put that into the second round. Uh, the second round of funding is due June 1st, and that can be design and construction. So we'll be putting in a quite a list of projects um, for that. One project that we uh, have, a one bridge project for sure that we're putting in there that we already have the plans. I was hoping to be able to submit them in the first round as County Chunk Highway L was a project that we had to be shovel ready. We ran into some complications with the design that we're gonna need to purchase right away, which purchasing right away, as I mentioned earlier, kicks it out of that first round of submittal. So we'll be submitting that one. Um, along with that one, we may be submitting as many as six other county bridges on the systems and another two to five on the local systems, depending on the newest bridge rankings that are coming out in March. Uh, as you recall that the bridges are inspected on a every other year, some bridges are inspected every year. Um, so we're waiting to get those rankings, which will be coming out here in the next three or four weeks to determine what bridges fall below that 50% su sufficiency rating so we can enter them into the bridges, into the program. That's what I don't know, it's some of these town bridges, I have three bridges, one sitting at 51, another one sitting at 51, and one sitting at 52. And with this newest ranking, if they drop below 50, I can submit them for the townships. But again, we'll be submitting uh, seven bridges into this program uh, for possible funding. Um, again, we're gonna have to wait to see what the federal reimbursement formula is, how much the county's gonna need for a match. But currently in the 2022 to 27 uh, pro uh, process that's already out there, um, we have about $965,000 of match money that we're gonna have to come up with on the $4.8 million projects that are out there. So again, in the current cycle that I had just submitted, uh, it's $965,000. Um, so what I asked the state was, I said, okay, that's our 20% share on projects that are still coming that I submitted in December that I'm waiting to hear back on. I said, what happens if I could get 100% funding on those bridges? And they said, well, that's in the last cycle. We don't know if those, what's the cycle of funding gonna be. They're thinking that's gonna remain at the 80-20. I, I said to him, well, if that's the case, none of these have been approved yet. If I get approval before I sign the state municipal agreement, the SMA, I'm going to decline them and resubmit them into the new package and hopefully get 100% funding. So why don't you just fund me 100% right away and we could save $965,000. So we're having those discussions currently with the Department of Transportation if instead of me going through the process and them going through the process of resubmitting, uh, if they could just look at the new funding for, for that 22-27 cycle. Um, we also have the 20, 2020 to 25 program out there that we have two bridges on County uh, K and on Highway L and O, which is uh, $2.3 million uh, out there for those bridges. So we have to, that'll be also our share on those 20 to 25. I asked about changing the funding on those they said they're set, they're too far through the system, they will not change the funding on those. So again, we have uh, a few bridges coming up here in the next couple of years. Excuse me, our match is 472,000 for the bridges on L and O. The total cost for those bridges are 2.3. So our share is 472,000. Both of those bridges are scheduled for 2024. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be submitting a bunch of projects into the, the program. Uh, Kevin and I have kind of gone through a good list of projects of the projects that we're gonna submit into the program for design and construction. These will be for the June 1st letting is the County Trunk Highway X and Ross Avenue intersection uh, by the new municipal center and the school out there. That's one we have talked about already. We're currently, we did the, uh, analysis on that intersection with MSA. 
We're working with the Village of Weston currently on that project, but fortunately for us, we haven't got to the point of looking for a design firm, so now we can submit it into the program and uh, look for that 80-20 funding on that. We feel that that'll be a very strong project, seeing that we're working with another municipality and a school, that'll, that'll rank very high. Um, County Trunk Highway W from Wassa to the North County Line. County Trunk Highway M from County Trunk Highway P to County Trunk Highway N through the um, Village of Fenwood. County Trunk Highway Double X, beginning at X going up to Business 51. County Trunk Highway KK from Sherwood to N. And County Trunk Highway R slash N from Sherman down to KK. Uh, and along with those other bridges that I had mentioned earlier. Again, those projects we're gonna be submitting. We'll see how the projects turn out uh, as far as funding. Uh, if approved, then we'll come back to the committee to make sure that uh, you are willing to do the 80-20 match fund. But at this point, this is, uh, those are the projects that we plan on submitting, and uh, we'll come back at a later date after we get some information back on funding levels. So that's kind of my, kind of my update. Uh, I'll be working, uh, I'm gonna put some draft a letter to work with the townships um, to help them through the process. Um, it's a little different than the trip project for the townships because we get paid to administer the trip project. We're not getting any reimbursement from anybody, but I'm not gonna let my friends of the townships uh, hang out there. So we will we'll work with the, we'll, we'll work with the townships trying to help them through the process with their projects. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna work from beginning to end and oversee the entire project, but we will get them off running. Just one quick question on the, you mentioned there's the April 1st and June 1st deadlines. When would construction be for those projects? The, the ones for the April 1st deadline, those will all be 2023 construction. So the Highway T, J, and X projects, those will be for 2023 constructions. And the other projects uh, that we're submitting, we can split those out anywhere all the way up to 2027. Gotcha. Does anybody in the committee have any questions? I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, Jim, where is the state on 153? 153, they're rebuilding that. The uh, 153, they're replacing the culverts and doing some uh, where they have to. They, the whole road should be dug out and redone, but they're they're picking select areas, so they're replacing the culverts and select areas, or we're replacing some of the subgrade and base. That'll be done this year, and then uh, it'll be paved in 2023. Supervisor Robinson. So, Jim, in, in light of the recent discussions we've had relative to the 2050 plan, um, do we have plans to make sure that we maintain our um, current general transportation aid, you know, as we move and advance these projects, are we looking at just having enough projects in place we, so we can sustain the current state transportation aid the, payments? This should enhance that. That's all, this will increase it because these projects are on and above what we normally will be spending. So They're above. Okay. Yeah. And plus with the, in 2023, with the County Trunk Highway K project coming up, um, that'll, that'll boost that six-year average. Thank you. Any other questions, comments from the committee? Hearing none, I want Supervisor Dickinson. Supervisor Dickinson, go ahead. Thanks. Um, the question is, the 20%, the have we had a budget kind of in place already for that? Um, is that 20% gonna be more than what we budgeted? Uh, that sort of thing, if you can comment on that, Jim. The, our, our budget goes from year to year, so we have not budgeted anything out for the, two, the, the other projects, a 20% match for the County Trunk Highway T, J, and X. But we did run those projects last year back through infrastructure and HR finance and property to ensure that uh, we would finance those in 2023 or whenever the program came up. But that'll be, that'll be in their 2023 budget when I work on that this fall. All right, thank you. And one other one other question, and that is um, the list of those, you know, the list of, of T and J and X, and you went through that pretty quickly. Is that kind of succinct in some documents somewhere that we could have? 
I, I could get you those. We, uh, again, last year when we went through that through infrastructure, I believe that was last summer, John, we ran that through infrastructure and property finance. But we did run those through this committee at one point and HR finance. But if you want those, I can uh, okay. definitely send those to you. Yeah, you I, I, can, I can look for it, and if I don't find it, I'll just let you know. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I want to thank Jim and Kevin for all their work on this. It's a unique time with a lot of money available and to be in a good position to take advantage of it's going to suit us well now and into the future. So I thank you guys for your work on that. Moving on to item 4B, county utility accommodation policy. The utility accommodation policy uh, was uh, sent in your packet. Um, now this has been in place since 2020. Um, actually it was originally a uh, drafted by Glenn Spike, the former commissioner here at Marathon County. Um, we ran it through the Wisconsin County Highway Association. Most counties do have this in place. Um, I, I believe that numbers around 60 some counties have adopted the policy. The policy was brought back to the WCHA utility uh, committee for some cleanups. And one other thing that uh, we know we needed to uh, discuss a little bit more was a small to cell towers. Um, that's covered on page 49. I did contact Jerry uh, if he had any comments. I haven't heard anything back from Jerry. But this, uh, the policy as given was adopted by the Wisconsin County Highway Association at our January Highway Committee, um, as, as is. Now, with that being said, we would like to adopt it again to keep uniformity through the state. Um, I, I know that uh, John has gone through it thoroughly, and he has found... Uh, some changes that he would like to make before uh, we consider adoption. Go ahead, Supervisor Robinson. Well, I had I had some concerns in there, and you know, the, one of the concerns is on page ten of the policy. You know, it gets into the the issue of um, indemnification and holding parties harmless and. Throughout the document, we changed the department to count, county, and in this one case, we left it at um, the department, and I think it's critical that um, they page be nine, consistent throughout the document. Um, that was page 9, I believe. Oh, sorry, page 9. And then on page 10, there was, you know, just nitpicky. They, they didn't, the, you know, the county highway commissioner versus commission. Uh, there were some editorial changes, commas in the wrong place that changed the meaning. Um, on, um, later, I had a question about why they removed the, um, one of the provisions relative to management of contaminated material um, in, in the resolution. And I also have a, a concern uh, that stems out of the work that we do at the Broadband Task Force relative to the the, the lack of as-built and accuracy in the context of locating utilities within the right-of-way. And I, it would be great if we could tighten up that the issue of accuracy because they're supposed to work at the edge of the right-of-way, outside the ditch line, but we found, um, particularly last year with work that w that uh, Wittenberg Tell was doing in the Hatley area, that there were 10 foot differences between what uh, was supposed to be there in, in more um, and what's there. So um, it would be nice if the utility accommodation policy could require, you know, we're, we're living in an area era where it's easier to track where those locates are and locate them with technology, GPS te technology that gets into the sub-meter category. category. It would be nice if we could require accurate as belts or locates after the fact so that when we have utility work happening in the future, we've got a much better understanding of what's available within the utility right of way. And those are my concerns. You know, the, the fundamental concerns are why did we eliminate the, um, the language relative to the um, contamination materials on page 21, and then why don't we have more accurate information from the utilities as they provide that work in the in the future. So uh, I, I understand this is a model. I, I would, um, I could live with the policy as 
drafted with those editorial changes, but requests that they look at the issue of management of contaminated material because counties, be, depending upon how we acquire them, have generally some limitations on liability. Uh, if we acquire it through eminent domain and in other forms on contamination, unless we move it and once it begins to get moved, um, there's liability for the person moving it and the owner of the property. And I, I just get concerned if we start t tinkering with that without a, a fallback and understanding that the, the policy doesn't supersede other statutes. But um, uh, it is an area where I think that we need clarification and protection from the county so they, the work of utility doesn't necessarily increase our liability as a county for work that occurs within our right of way. So I, I think that's a concern and that that issue of locates in after the fact um, drawings and, and uh, reporting with a great with accuracy is critical to ongoing efforts. Um, if you could maybe draft me up those that question regarding the DNR and I could forward it to the committee for their review again. As far as the accuracy and as belts, we can make that part of our permitting process. Um, it wouldn't have to be part of, if the rest of the state doesn't uh, want to follow that, uh, you know, that, that could be their issue, but we can add that to the appendix that goes with this, that has our local information on, um, you know, as far as, um, the, our, our contact information, stuff like that. So we could maybe uh, talk to uh, Chris, who's online here, about tightening up our policy a little bit as far as, you know, providing as-belts. We could provide that as part of the reclamation plan that they need to provide as-belts. And if you could email me the question regarding the DNR concerns, I'd oh. forward, I would forward that on to the WCHA uh, Utility Committee for their review. I will be happy to do that. And one other final point um, is what is, is there a definition of completion of work in, in that concern arises out of the restoration because they're, they're supposed to remove things from the right of way and other things. But given the work that TDS did in the city of Wausau and how slow they were even on this built right outside of our courthouse, um, it is critical that we get them to do the restoration activities and, and restore it. But there were some horror stories on Bridge Street where, the, where sidewalks were ripped up, dirt piles were there for months. Um, and we need to have a good definition of completion of work and make sure that those utilities get in and do the work and the cleanup necessary as soon as possible. So do we have a definition of completion of work for triggering the timelines? We, we do not have a, there, there's supposed to be a six month timeline to this. Um, it's been a struggle since I did utility permits 25, 30 years ago for them to get uh, reclamation done because there's so many subcontractors now involved in this mm -hmm. that you can't track it. You used to be able to call GT up and talk to the lady right down the street up here and uh, she would call the crew and they would get out there and get it fixed. Those days are gone. Um, it's a constant struggle over at the reclamation on these projects. Is Then is our only avenue for enforcement of that the, the subsequent permits and we have to stay on top of that. Our, our uh, current avenue is, and we've done this for years, if we start getting a lot of them that uh, aren't completed, we stop issuing you new permits until they start cleaning up old ones. I, I guess Super that, right. Supervisor Seiler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, again, following up on uh, some of Supervisor Robinson's thoughts and with how does this impact the broadband work and all of that going forward. So um, seeing that this original document was created in, in 2000, I'm just wondering from then until now, um, you know, what is your estimation of the inventory or the number of maps we have for the utilities? I mean, is there like, could you guess uh, commissioner, like, uh, is it 50%? Is it 25? Uh, Chris is online. Chris, how many, uh, could you give me an estimate of how many in the last couple of years, how many utility permits you have been issuing uh, per year? Yeah, um, I actually counted that up when we started doing it for Oxcart. I believe last year was around 60 utility permits. Um, 
And with that system we're using, I'm hoping the closure part of it gets better because the people that use that have their own account and they can see how many permits they have open in their own account. So then what they're supposed to do now is um, uh, request an inspection. And then when they request an inspection, I go in and it shows that that's closed. So until it's closed, it stays like as multiple open permits in this new system we're looking at as a way to try and facilitate that. And in the past, I'd, I'd say the ones that were closed out, some companies are better than others, maybe 20% maybe get closed out. And sometimes I just go look at them on my own, especially the bigger ones. I try to watch more than, say, a drop line under the road, if that answers your question. Sure. And, and again, uh, thank you for that. But uh, again, thinking of some of the conversations we've had in the past here or at the broadband task force is how many are out there that, you know, are pre predate all of this and do we have any idea? Because I, until reading this, I have to say I wasn't aware that it, it could be, you know, it's common that there may be private utilities who are not part of the diggers hotline um, system, which I found alarming. So um, given that, is there a requirement for anyone to be part of that? Or, um, you know, as it, again, I found that concerning because how do, whether it's residents or municipalities or whatever, is, is this disclosed right away in the permit or as the company goes forward doing their work? Because that, again, was a surprise. I, I, I don't believe there's anybody out there right now that uh, has a line that is not part of the diggers hotline. Okay. We've had a few private lines go across the road. We make them sign those themselves. Um, we're part of diggers hotline because we have some lines along County Trunk Highway and out in Rim Mountain for a traffic to us. So we're part of diggers hotline. So we, what we do is we, uh, and Chris maybe can correct me if I'm wrong on this. We've been making the one or two that I've known in the last, since I've been here, private people putting lines across. I know there was one down on Highway Y, for example, that ran one across uh, for his irrigation lines. He needed power. We needed. We had him sign that himself out there that there was lines. Otherwise, we, we encourage him to become part of Diggers. Okay. So, thank you for that. And, and yeah, Jim. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Another thing that when I when I do them permits like I've had a water line for a barn where they're going to do across the street or whatever. Um, I put stipulations to mark them and then I also put a little paragraph. I'm not an attorney, but I drew it up the best I could that basically said, yeah, the county's held uh, harmless or they're not accountable for any damages to that line if we're doing maintenance or anything coming through there. That's kind of like theirs and, and we're out of it if they're not part of diggers. And I, and I put that right on the permit when they sign. Thanks, Chris. Does anybody on the committee have any other questions on the policy? Jerry, go ahead. Jerry, you want to grab that mic in front of you? Um, I just noticed on page 43, I think it is worksite cleanup, it says within two weeks of completion is kind of a follow-up question on, on uh, Supervisor Robinson's. Is there a penalty if they don't clean up or how, would, how do you deal with it? I, I mean, I know that they're not cleaning stuff up within two weeks, so. Yeah, again, uh, we just, our, our process right now is we just don't issue more permits if they have too many out there. And I don't believe there's utility out there that cleans it up within two weeks. Yeah. I, I, I mean, especially lately, we haven't been seeing it because they're using so many subs. Um, and the other thing I wanted to bring up was uh, on the, there's a piece on trenching that says they have to trench 24 inches deep. I don't think that they're doing 24 inch deep trenching. I think they're boring probably in the 24 to 30 inches, but I think when they trench, they're typically not going that deep. That's not, I don't think that's normal yep. for them. Uh, no, for, I know if they're plowing, they're normally not going 24. Yeah. Um, if they're well, are you, are you, is there, are you have providing separate language from plowing versus trenching? There, there's the plowing and trenching is two different categories. Okay, so there's a, where's the plowing one? I only saw the trenching one. I figured you were using the same language. Yeah, I'm sure where that actually is in here. The trenching one was on page 40, 41. 41. 
That's because the the common way is plowing and not. Trenches. Yeah, I, most of the fiber stuff is being done with plows, and I think they typically are in the kind of 15 to 18 inch range, but I'm not positive about that. That's my approximate data. I thought you were using trenching to, to be a collective language for, right. for trenching I, I, and plowing. I know so. in, the, in the utility world, um, they use two different terms. Okay. You think there's a separate pa paragraph in here on plowing? I, in? I didn't see any. It would be, you'd be right in this category where there was, so I, I had something else I'd have to check out. For we, should, we should maybe address that because there's a lot of plowing that's going to happen in the next two years here. Sure. Jim, it looks like page 47, maybe check that out. I typed it in on my computer. It looks like plowing operations number three under minor projects. I don't know if that's what you're looking for. Page 47. Yeah, that's what I'm Yeah, the, that's, it's, it's definitely listed there. It says minor projects are defined as excavation, which will be restored in the same day or immediately the next day. That's, that's not been my experience with these guys. They'll plow it, and then sometimes they'll have another company come in to push the pile back into the plowing. So, you know, some of the rigs are designed to kind of clean up behind themselves, but yeah. um, my own experience with it in the Town of Red Mountain stuff is, is wherever they start and stop, they end up leaving a big mess. And it's usually there until you complain and call them about 10 times. So yeah, I think want to try to figure that out. I think generally speaking, the, whole, the entire metro area um, in the last couple of years, especially with the TDS project coming in, um, I think there was issues area wide with not necessarily TDS, but subcontractors. And I know there was a ton of hours and time expended from the municipalities, public works departments following up on that. So I think that's important to keep in mind as we continue this discussion of how we do our permitting and talking about uh, our next item and our broadband expansion. So any other questions from the committee, comments? Otherwise, what would be the uh, process moving forward? We'll, we'll, uh, John will submit comments to commissioner and those will get forwarded on to the WCHA. Correct. WCHA Utility Com Committee. Supervisor Robinson. I would move that we um, adopt the the uh, model um, utility accommodation policy subject to changing the department to county um, and correcting the typos. Um, Second, Johnson. We have, a, we have a motion from Robinson, a second from Johnson. Any further questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed say nay. Aye. aye. All right, motion passes. We are on to item 4C, permitting process for broadband expansion. I'll, uh, I'll start this conversation. Uh, uh, Going right along with the, going right along with the um, conversation on the utility accommodation policy, uh, we'll be handling this. We want to look at maybe handling this a little bit different. Currently, our policy is if somebody drops a line underneath a road, it's a hundred and seventy-five dollar permit. You know, big projects you might run down the road a mile, and it's a hundred and seventy-five dollar permit, which includes our administration, Chris Bagoon, our. Uh, from our office who's online here going through the permits making sure everything is properly permitted and going to make sure that uh, the cleanup is done um, with the broadband expansion we are looking at a uh, approximately 175 miles on the county system is a number I received from uh, Luke who is working on the permitted permits right now so I have talked to uh, uh, we had a small meeting between John and Randy, Jerry, myself, and Lance of where we would like to, uh, some ideas that we'd like to look forward to for the broadband expansion. Uh, we just don't feel it's fair for uh, the amount of work that we're gonna have at the highway department this year to go with a one permit process 
for all the miles of the road that's going to be covered under the broadband. So we're looking for some direction from the committee, uh, some suggestions of how we can recover our costs on this project. And I think this is a really interesting subject in that we're wanting to do what we can to encourage the broadband expansion at the same time we have to be worried about our costs and time that we're having our staff out in the field and just in working through that entire permitting process. So comments from the committee? Supervisor Robinson. During our discussion, we, we looked at various options. You have one permit for the larger project, and I, I think that we kind of ruled that out. Um, our current practice is generally you'll, if we've got a project that's a continuous project on, for instance, a, a county trunk highway, we'll chart, you let them do a bigger project with one permit. Um, the, um, some of the items that we explored were, do we create township um, approvals for, for instance, within a township hall project in there, or do we uh, create a, a hybrid um, and let them do a, a permit on a larger scale and then uh, bill them on a time and material basis um, so they'd have a larger project. Um, I, I'd like to see us keep and maintain our current permit process and from a fee perspective, I think this would be an appropriate use of ARPA funds to, to reimburse the department for their cost associated with it. The, the question is what would the mechanics be? And you know, if we wanted to look at a, if we had a, a large scale project like this, we could potentially look at charging the regular permit fee uh, and, and condition it upon covering the additional cost um, on a time and material basis that would uh, not hurt our bottom line from the, the revenue to the department and we could bill it back and then we can make the determination. In the case of bug tussle, the county has adopted a number of resolutions where we agreed to partner with them and we have uh, an application into the to, um, um, National Telephonics in Information Administration with Charter um, for a significant portion of Eastern Marathon County, a $20 million project. If that were to come through, I imagine that they would be looking at, at that. We're looking at the ARDOF uh, projects with uh, Charter and LTD on the northern and western side of the county that could be covered by this. So I think whatever we do, we want to be careful uh, and not undermine our ability to cover our costs. So um, I don't think that we're, we're eminent in the context of, of doing this, but I would like to have us explore the possibility of on those larger scale projects have a permit where they define the route. Uh, we issue the permit subject to their covering our cost on a time and material basis and then we will look at what sort of obligations or commitments that we made with them relative to partnering and if, if we've agreed to partner we could consider um, covering those permit fees through the um, American Rescue Plan Act designating a portion of the uh, those funds for broadband expansion, which again, I think is an appropriate use of those funds. So I throw that out for, for discussion. Thoughts from the committee? <clears throat> I, I think generally speaking, I agree with that approach and looking at the options available to us. Um, like I said earlier, we wanna, be, we wanna partner with the service providers out there, but we still have to look at what our costs are. We've got a very unique opportunity at the moment with the ARPA money. Uh, one of the big targets of that, at least in my mind, is the broadband. So I think that makes a lot of sense that we can tie that together. And there are... Go ahead. Supervisor, Supervisor Dick. Okay. We'll go Supervisor Dickinson and then we'll go Supervisor Robinson. Thank you. Um, how much money are we talking about here? You said is the permit's $175 per road, there's 175 miles. What is, what is that cost? Do we have any idea what kind of scale that is? I think a lot depends on how, the, how they put it in, the timing of the projects. I mean, if they're going to, uh, I'll send them out near neck of the woods, if they're gonna do all of Cle town of Cleveland and get it done, uh, so we're out there inspecting when they put it in and they would come out there when they clean it up right away is totally different than if all of a sudden they're going to start in Stratford and run that utility all the way out to 
burning wood and then we have to come back. So there's a lot of variables in it. Um, I would guess we would have, Chris you, want, Chris, you want to throw a number out there? How many hours of inspection you would have on 175 miles? Yeah, <clears throat> um, I don't even know, kind of like, uh, it, it would be a huge undertaking because like when I do a permit now, I, I try to look at the right of way and where they're gonna put the line and then I've already taken calls where the line's in the bottom of the ditch and it states they're supposed to be at the back of the ditch, but to actually go just go through the plans before even approving it, uh, station by station to look at 175 miles of right away and try to make sure, because I've already ran into, well, we're 33 feet off of the center line, that's what we put in the plan. Well, that puts you in the ditch bottom. I didn't realize that looking at a blueprint. So I, I don't even know, uh, it would be like a full-time job for the whole summer to follow around to take the time to approve and then work with all these utility contractors uh, being on site when they're placing it I'd, it'd, it'd probably be almost like a full-time job for that much uh many miles i i would say i would say at a minimum this inspection we probably have ten thousand dollars this if you're going out there just to make sure if they're cleaned up right not talking about following them through the process. Supervisor Robinson. But the issues really needs to be bifurcated. The, the first part is how do we approach the permitting? Yeah. And do we, do we have an expedited process by which we would look at longer segments than each crossing? And I think we would want to do that so that, that um, Chris could, could get a better handle on that. So we, I think our, if we could streamline our process to allow for those larger scales, but then we would uh, change that from a, a simple fee, $175, into a, an application fee and then a time and materials once the project exceeds a certain size and scope. The second item is how do we go about determining who pays for that in the context of expansion? We know that most of what Bug Tussle is proposing is going to be buried. Uh, we know that most of what Charter and LTD are proposing is going to be above grade on utility lines. So there will be a big difference relative to cost and what the county's role will be in, in looking at it. I think the desire would be to have it buried uh, throughout the county, but we're not in control of what those, um, those decisions are by the, by the utilities, but it, that would drive our, our costs. Um, uh, for them, and that's why if you go with a, a, an application plus a, a cost, um, it, it would reflect the, the involvement of um, our, our staff. So, uh, I, Jim, could you develop a, a policy that would allow us to handle those larger scales, modifying a permit to have a a permit, and then a, a plus our cost to, to bill out, and then later we'll have to determine what the county's role is relative to our participation in covering those fees. But we would protect our current policy. My, my question is when you say a permit for larger projects, again, kind of comes back to what you talked earlier. Are you talking about one application for the entire county? Or are we looking at one application per town, let's say? I, I personally, I think it's gonna be a lot easier if we do, even if it's one per town, that's a lot of miles right there. If we'd have them do one per town that they're in, uh, would be a little bit easier to handle from administrative point. But we could work with whatever, whatever the committee decides. If we, the only, con the only concern that I would have is if we did it by town and you caught just to clip the, the small corner of a town with a run, we would be charging for that, and it's not necessarily incurring any additional cost on the part of Chris. Um, it would be nice if we could get segmented projects that would have a, a duration, you know, a project that could be done. In, in the case of Bug Tussle, I think they're hoping to bury all of their uh, fiber this year, um, and I don't know how that changes, and I know that in the, in the case, well, they want to put the fiber to the towers this year. They'll do some of the connections to the premises over the next couple of years. 
So there may be uh, multiple projects within that project. So you've got the fiber and the, um, it, from the right of way into the, into the home. So I'm not sure how it would be handled, but. Um, I, I, I would think it would probably all even out because you might hit a corner of a township, but you only have a quarter of a mile, but the next township you may have 30 miles right. in that township. So I would think that would even off so if you would have a permitting process and they go time and materials on inspection. Yeah, I think at the end of the day with what $175 per township would be their fee. I think in the bigger picture of their costs in the process, if that gives us the ability to I don't know, break down the project a little bit. I think that might make sense from just our tracking perspective. It might make more sense when we're going through the process. If there's amendments, changes made that it's simpler to work on than working on the entire county, as big as our county is. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, honestly. I'd look for a motion if someone would like to make one. Supervisor Robinson. I would move to direct staff to modify our current, current permit process to allow for um, submittal of um, the, the, the permits on a town basis um, and for those larger projects to have a mechanism by which we can recover our cost on a time and material basis. Motion by Robinson, second by Seiler. Any further comments, questions? Jerry, go ahead. Supervisor Dickinson. Okay. We'll go Jerry and then Supervisor Dickinson. Two, two things. One, John, do you want to address if the count, uh, um, using broadband funds, ARPA funds, how, how that gets tied into it? And then second, um, Mike and I were working on the operating agreement that we have with Bug Tussle. He's trying to f look at the language in there. We recall that they specifically asked us to have language in there about simplifying the permitting process. So we need to look at that. Supervisor Robinson, you want to respond? Again, I think that the, the issue of the policy and who pays for it are two different issues. So I, I think what we need to do is set, set the policy first, and then we can look at um, what, our, what our obligations are, and we can enter into discussions yeah, with, sense, with those companies at a, at a later date. But I, yeah. Supervisor Dickinson? Yes, I'm actually going to echo what Jerry was saying there and, and, the, and, and a little bit what John was saying as well. It's, there certainly is the policy and process that we need to look at for how we're going to handle these larger scale, quote unquote, hybrid um, uh, projects. There also is the question about Tussle and what does our contract say with them and how, how, does, how is this affected with that? Um, and part of that is... Um, a third kind of part of that is where the money is going to come from uh, for the for the time to do this uh, in the summer or whenever that is. Um, I will note that you know ARPA money generally is a you know applying to these to these projects that are going to help us through uh, the pandemic, and so I think that that's a fair use of it, uh, I would suggest that that would go through the funding process mm -hmm. that's been established. Thanks. Any further comments or questions? Any further comments or questions? I have a question. Oh, okay, go, wow. ahead. Oh, okay, go ahead. Chris? Sorry. <laughs> I just, I, I I'm understanding the charge with the with the extra funds or whatever, um, but I think we also have to think about um, having the resources to do the work um, and to do it properly. What, what it's going to take, um, you know, it'll be a lot of time. I, I don't know that I have time to do all of that. So. It's not just about the funding, it's about having the resources available to do all this. I don't know if there's a consultant on that's overseeing all this project or if it's uh, just the utility companies with Marathon County and we're letting them go. As far as the resources, I guess we'll have to figure that one out internally, but I guess that is a good question is 
are these firms just going on their own or do they have an inspector on site? And I'm just going off of what I've seen in the past. I don't know if they necessarily have an inspector on site. We may just have to uh, talk about that internally, Chris, and figure out uh, who we have from our staff uh, that could follow these also. All right, we have a motion and a second on the table. Any further questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And anybody opposed, aye. say nay. All right, motion passes. We are on to item 4D, carryover of capital improvement funds for broadband expansion from 2021 to 2022. I think that's me. <laughs> that, <clears throat> that's here because the broadband task force at their last meeting um, made a request that the, there's approximately $114,000 left from last year's capital improvement plan that we, um, we have available to work as a, a match. And we had actually committed all of it based upon the applications that went to the Public Service Commission with the ARPA round um, and we use that money to, to uh, commit to uh, Country Wireless um, as well as Wittenberg uh, Teller Serenity. Uh, Country Wireless was not successful in their application and therefore we um, didn't spend the money and uh, the money would uh, lapse and we're requesting that that money be carried over from 2001 into 2022 and made available for match as we approach the next Public Service Commission um, grant application process. So um, with that, I would move that we uh, recommend, the, the Broadband Task Force reports to this committee and therefore we're running it through. So I would move that we re uh, request that the um, HR Finance Committee and others um, carry over the 2021 capital improvement funding for broadband expansion into 2022. Motion by Robinson. I'd second that, Dickinson. And a second from Dickinson. Any further questions, comments from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And anybody opposed say nay. Motion passes. We are on to item five, operational functions required by statute, ordinance, resolution, or policy, which we have none today. Moving us on to item six, educational presentations and committee discussions. Airport update. I think Brian's online. Go ahead, Brian. I am. Thank you, Chair Feifrick. Um, airport focus over the next year is really categorized into two separate uh, divisions, air service and infrastructure improvement. Um, so I'll talk about those and, and I'll have some time for uh, questions afterwards. Um, so first air service, I think as, as most everybody knows, we lost United Service at the beginning of this month, or excuse me, uh, last month, January 4th. Uh, so that leaves uh, a hole in our air service. Quite, a, uh, quite honestly, there is untapped demand within our community. Uh, certainly uh, COVID has, has softened that somewhat. But um, as we look towards spring and summer, uh, there is more demand than there is available seats. So that, that presents us with a unique opportunity. Um, I've been working over the last uh, several months with a uh, business um, air service group uh, to understand their needs. We had a survey that went out a few weeks ago uh, just to see what type of destination, uh, what type of additional service uh, would be most supported throughout the community. Um, with really the focus on um, a uh, ultra low cost carrier service. Uh, that, those results came back a few weeks ago and it really it's, it's Florida and Florida beach destinations that are on that top position uh, with some of the other obvious ones um, uh, coming up second, Phoenix, Arizona, Las Vegas, Denver, um, et cetera. So uh, taking that information, uh, doing a vacation destination analysis uh, which is looking at available cell phone data, app-based data, uh, to see where people are actually tra traveling to, uh, to uh, put a good pitch in front of uh, a number of low-cost carriers to, 
to hopefully secure that type of service. Um, ultra low cost carriers, it's something this community hasn't had before. And uh, it's really interesting to see the market stimulation that happens in other communities when a low cost carrier comes in. Um, and what I mean by that is, uh, yes, you've got your, your people that fly uh, anyway, uh, will be recapturing uh, some of those passengers that leak to other markets, uh, but also uh, the, the stimulation um, generates um, flying interest in, in people that haven't traveled before. So historic highs uh, here at Central Wisconsin Airport are about 160,000 in planements. and planement is people getting on planes. Um, you know, we could see that uh, easily reach those number and exceed that with, with market stimulation. Uh, and again, given that on uh, that potential right now uh, and the demand that isn't being served by our existing carriers, uh, timing really has not been better. Um, that is tempered, of course, with the overall um, nationwide worker shortage. Uh, the airlines have, have the same issues that everybody does, uh, but we'll be working hard to uh, to hopefully get a low-cost carrier um, option. Um, getting a low-cost carrier into our community, um, it's it's very much a pay-to-play uh, type of proposition. Um, so they would be looking at uh, some sort of uh, financial offset to defer their operating startup costs. It is it's very expensive to start a new market such, such as Central Wisconsin. Um, for that, I will be applying for a SCASD grant from the FAA. That's a small community uh, air service development grant that's focused specifically on, on this type of, um, of need. Um, it's a competitive process, no guarantees, but I think we've got a good story to tell uh, with uh, reduced service, um, you know, higher than average load fare and, and that strong demand. Uh, well, before we shift gears, uh, you know, that's not to say we're um, forgetting about our incumbents. So American and Delta Airlines, there is strong demand for additional frequencies and additional destinations on, on those airlines as well. Uh, so certainly we'll be working with them as well to increase frequency and uh, meet the demand as best they can as well. Shifting slightly to uh, infrastructure improvements. I think everybody uh, has heard, if, if they haven't, uh, we did reopen our runway that was reconstructed in 2021. Uh, the runway is fully functional. We're just waiting on an FAA flight check uh, to certify our nav aids. Uh, that is scheduled for February 16th. After the 16th, we anticipate uh, the entire airfield to be fully operational. Uh, and reduce our uh, minimums, our aircraft can get into um, with, with lower minimums. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, the two hangars that uh, started construction last year are making some great progress. Uh, the first one, which is uh, Odyssey Aviation, they moved their plane in uh, yesterday. Uh, so they're, they're operational now, still tying out the office side of things, but, um, but the, uh, the plane is in the hangar, so that's great to see. And the second hangar that started, uh, slightly larger, uh, that started coming out of the ground over the last couple of weeks. Uh, they're setting roof trusses right now, so you can start to see the scale of that. Also, also very exciting. Uh, the Central Wisconsin Joint Airport Board at the board meeting last week uh, approved a uh, design for our runway shift project. Uh, and I'll update the committee on, on that. Um, that's part of a, um, over five year process right now that was born out of our master plan process uh, to address runway uh, geometry issues that the FAA was looking to resolve. Specifically, our overlapping thresholds, uh, if you can picture the runway, it's an L shape. Uh, those thresholds, they don't like them overlapping. Uh, this project uh, will decouple those. Uh, still working with headquarters on uh, what that ultimate runway length will be. The master plan did um, through a very public process uh, come up with the final um, length of 7,723 7, feet, uh, which is essentially exactly what it is uh, right now. Uh, FAA is, uh, FAA headquarters rather, is um, still has some questions on that. So I've got a meeting scheduled with them on March 7th to hopefully put that to bed and get this project, um, long overdue project um, started. 
Um, last item, not so much um, on air service or infrastructure is we're hiring, probably like every department, but we do have one open position for an operations and maintenance technician too. That's our air side um, operations and maintenance technician. So it's a very brief update uh, from the airport. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you all have. Does anybody on the committee have any questions? Well, a Florida beach sir sounds nice on a crisp day like today, so hopefully you can uh, make that happen. Give it everything I can. Thank you. Randy? Uh, go ahead. Uh, what is Odyssey Aviation? What do they do? Uh, they're a flight department for a, um, for a local manufacturer. All right. I want to thank Brian for his update. Move on to item 6B, 2050 transportation plan update. Go ahead, Commissioner. Uh, we did receive the 2050 plan that we've been waiting to review at the committee level. Um, after a real quick review in-house, um, I sent it off to uh, John because he had started this and Randy, and we sat down with North Central Planning Region and we found a, uh, a lot of holes, a lot of missing data a lot of questions, so we sent it back to them with a series of questions. Um, so they are working on updating it and getting it to you with all the charts updated. Um, it will either be the March or April meeting. Any questions on that update? Hearing none, we'll move on to item 6C, update on 28th Avenue, Commissioner. I'm, I'm delegating, Kevin Lang. <laughs> We have Becker Hoppy working on getting the plans, preliminary plans revised for that, looking at uh, probable cost for a two-lane construction. So we've worked with City of Wassa. They have some input that received yesterday. Then the Village of Maine is getting together and getting some of their input, and Becker Hoppy should be working on that over the next uh, six to eight weeks of just basically changing that typical section from a four-lane to a two-lane and then getting some cost estimates and real estate impacts estimated so we can have some further discussions. Any questions from the committee on the update? Hearing none, we'll move on to item 6D, broadband expansion update. Supervisor Robinson. Uh, we are continuing to work with uh, Bug Tussle and Bug Tussle is uh, revising their, their numbers as you recall in October we uh, approved a series of resolutions um, uh, that led to their going out with conduit bonding with uh, a total of five counties for 75 million. 25 million of that will be spent on Marathon County. Their plans are to uh, complete about, um, they're, they're funded at about 270 miles and they're looking at potentially uh, 375 miles of fiber. They're working with um, other internet service providers to try to um, take advantage of their fiber in the ground and, and uh, reduce that number and they're, they're continuing to work on towers. Uh, the towers are hoping to get the infrastructure work done this year. Um, in addition, we are still awaiting word from uh, NTIA relative to the status of our grant application with Charter Communication that we submitted in July of last year. We have not heard. Um, we do not have any updates at this time from relative to the Rural Development Opportunity, Rural Digital Opportunity Fund, um, relative to Charter and um, LTD. We have been having discussions with both uh, firms looking for updates, so there's not a lot to report. They were selected a year ago to advance and submit a long form application. Uh, both Charter and LTD were the number one and number two, LTD being the largest uh, awardee um, in the country in charter number two. Um, they've had very few projects approved anywhere in the country. Uh, FCC has been slow in that process. They go through the long form, look for financial vi uh, viability and the ability to do it, as well as uh, they don't want to fund projects where there's uh, currently existing service. So they're, they're narrowing the number of census tracts covered and we're, we're awaiting word and we're, we're tracking that. Uh, we have had uh, good discussions with charter relative to their plans, they're ready to roll. LTD has expressed a, an interest in it. 
One of the problems with that process is that it could be up to a 10-year process by which they provide the service. Again, this is a gigabyte service. Uh, both companies are looking currently at um, using existing poles or utility uh, areas. We would hope that they'd look at the potential for burying it because it's more weatherproof. Um, and we explore ways that we can work with them to accelerate deployment. Charter has given us a, some tentative plans that would do that, uh, and we are having discussions with LTD. On March uh, 17th, the Public Service Commission will, will be set a deadline for applications for $100 million of state funding. Uh, we sent out a letter to the Internet service providers telling them to bring forth their projects by um, Monday the 14th of February for us to evaluate and determine where we will partner and how we will partner. Um, those um, partnership opportunities include generating letters of support as we've done in the past and uh, being a, a financial partner um, if uh, they meet our criteria and that criteria um, is the upload download speed and, and um, trying to serve some of those uh, targeted areas. So we, we look forward to that opportunity. Um, we've heard from some firms that are very interested in, in that. We had discussions with, um, with Charter and um, Nor, Nor has left, Nor Ali Hassam has been hired in the administrator's office to uh, work on special projects and she's been very helpful in communicating with the ISPs and she will be, one of her special projects is broadband expansion, so we're, we're looking at that. We've reached out in, in um, next Tuesday, the Greater Wassa Prosperity Partnership uh, we'll be meeting, and, and we've um, given them a, an update status report. But one of the things we're requesting of them is to uh, continue generating letters of support as they've done in the past for these projects, as well as considering a local a match. Um, and uh, we've found that many of the projects that were successful in the past with the PSC had additional funding partners and uh, people with skin in the game. Uh, we've reached out to them. We've also reached out to the towns and encourage them to keep a portion of their ARPA funds uh, available should opportunities present themselves with match requirements that they could um, use those funds and we'll be reaching out to them as well. We also have reached out to the um, to others and we will be sending out, um, if it hasn't gone out, we'll be going out in the next day or so, a, um, a, um, a spread or a um, poster um, on internet speed, encouraging people to do to take the internet um, speed test through uh, Geo Partners. If you, Kendra, if you can pull it up, it will be sent to all of you, and we encourage you to spend it. But it's important that we get good data um, for applications because currently, if one person in a census tract is served, the entire census tract is assumed to be served, and that's just wrong. So the FCC and PSC have poor information, and we can overcome that by taking the speed test. So uh, that brochure will be going out to all county board members, um, school boards, um, school officials, um, town officials, um, local business groups, agricultural groups, et cetera, um, to try to get them to encourage, to take the test and encourage others to take the test. So uh, we hope that um, uh, people do that. So. That's what I have. Anything, Jerry? Any questions from the committee on the update? I would echo Commissioner Robinson's comments about the internet speed test. I think that's very important and as we're going through the process to have good data that we can have and talk about as many poor spots in the county that we have with poor broadband, poor access, but Having the data is very helpful in the grant process. So encourage everybody to do that and share that with friends and family, coworkers. Hearing no comments, thank you for the update. We'll move on to item 6E, updates from Highway Commissioner. Uh, I was asked to give a quick update just on our county winter maintenance where we're sitting this year. Uh, the period of time is, I consider, November 1st until the end of January. So we've gone through about 4,221 tons of salt this year compared to 2,654 last year. Uh, if you remember in November and December, a lot of the uh, snow and ice event, the snow events, we had ice on either before or after or sometimes both. 
So we have gone through more salt this year. Uh, the salt price itself went up uh, from 90, 80, 40 last year to 94, 57 this year. Uh, we still have 7,500 tons of salt on hand with another 2,100 tons still available. A thousand that are, uh, we are obliga obligated to take and another 1,100 is vendor reserve. I normally take the vendor reserve because I've yet to see the salt go down in price from year to year. So I usually, if I have room, I'll take the vendor reserve. Um, from October through January, we spent about 1,134,684 on winter maintenance uh, on the county side compared to 1,033,334 last year. Um, again, the difference is pretty much all in the salt usage and the price. So we're, that's been pretty close. On the state side, uh, we spent 766993 through January, but you need to remember there is no salt cost in the state side. The state purchases the salt, so we don't have to touch it. They, they buy and put it in our shed, so that price does not include any salt salting. Um, uh, total this year, we've been out since through January, we've been out 40, we've had 49 events this year that we've been out uh, doing some type of application. We have two new employees here starting on Monday and one two weeks later, which will make us full for the first time in many years. Great. Does anybody have any questions on the update? Questions on winter maintenance? Hopefully we can get some or continue our prolonged period of no snow. I know it's useful in my small level of keeping a driveway clear, so I imagine it's even greater at your level of trying to keep county highways and state highways open. <laughs> All right, not hearing any further comments on the update. We'll move on to item 6F, updates from CCIT director. Go ahead, Jerry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I wanted to just give everyone an update on where we're at with the security enhancements that we were working on. We, we finished uh, implementing multi-factor authentication for all of uh, everybody that uses our email system on January 18th, uh, and that uh, is remote access and internal access to, to email because our mail most of our mail has been moved over to a cloud solution. We're required to do it internally and externally. Finished that on January 18th. The following Monday, the 24th, we implemented and forced in place um, remote what's VPN, which is virtual private networking, which is employees that work at home, particularly social services is a big category of that. Uh, so anyone that was working that works at home even occasionally, their laptop is, con is has always been configured with VPN, which is a secure, it's an encrypted path to us. That also required multi-factor authentication, so we implemented that on the 24th. And then we ran into two problems that week that took the whole week to get resolved. One was um, instant messaging in law enforcement, specifically Wasa Police Department, their messaging tool that they were sharing with the Wasa PD, with the Sheriff's Department called JBuddy. Uh, the vendor thought that that would work, it didn't. So we um, did an upgrade, did another upgrade, neither of them worked. So we ended up moving them over to a different instant messaging tool at the end of the week. And then we have some people that use uh, that access uh, through an environment called Portal to get access to their pay stubs to IntelliTime, our time tracking system. And uh, the Portal environment had a similar problem. The vendor said that it would work and it didn't. So we did an upgrade to Portal, that didn't fix it. Uh, and we moved over all of that activity on Monday of this week to behind uh, one of our other appliances to resolve it. So we, we finished the projects that we expected to finish. We said we'd be done by the end of January and we finished on January 31st, so <laughs> that's good. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to give an update on was enterprise resource planning. That's the uh, replacing our financial systems, our human resource systems with Workday. And uh, if you recall, that's got three other projects with it. One of them is already done, which was a, um, a mon management tool for m monitoring our investments. That is a product called Tracker. The, that was actually a really simple implementation, which has already been completed. And then uh, Teller is our cashiering software that we'll be implementing. And then Cartograph is what we'll be using for the highway department for job costing. The, the, um, the main focus right now is on Workday. We finished the plan stage, which was November and December. And we're in what they call architect stage, which we were, um, they just wrapped up. Uh, they, it's very time intensive. Uh, most of the people are spending 20 or 30 hours a week on it. 
they uh, are wrapping up this week and then next week and the week after there's not as many meetings because they have to submit all of their material. So there's worksheets that have to be put together. Some of these are extensive. Uh, one of the ones I looked at has 42, it's an Excel spreadsheet with 42 tabs and each of them have material that we have to type in. So this is the place where you're putting in all of the accounts, how you're setting up employee stuff, onboarding, resume, um, the, um, the talent tracking process, all of that work. So that uh, there's a lot of uh, due dates at the end of February for um, submitting that. And then March is mostly focused on, our staff will be mo mostly focused on taking training material, why Workday's uh, Consultant Collaborative does the configuration work. So March and April will be configuration. And then uh, May, June, and July is uh, where we finish all of the setup and then we go into testing by the end of the summer. So it's uh, currently on schedule, uh, as on the schedule that we had originally laid out at the moment. Any questions on either of those? Any questions from the committee? Hearing none, thank you for the update. We're on to item number seven, announcements, future meeting dates, agenda items. Next meeting will be March 3rd, 2022. Anything else for the good of the order? Hearing none, we're up for item eight. Motion by Supervisor Robinson to adjourn. Somebody want to Dickinson. Second. second from Dickinson. Motion and second to adjourn at 1017. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. But aye. Opposed. Thank you for your time, everybody. Have a great day. Stay warm out there. Goodbye. Jerry. <sighs>